And so welcome everybody. I hope that y'all are excited for this video. I am, to say the least, because this video has been a long overdue in the making. And to be honest, I could cope here by saying that I didn't have enough time or that, oh, I had too many problems or whatever. To be honest, I didn't really have the discipline and the willpower to sit down for 40 minutes or however long this video lasts and just speak about a certain topic. And today's topic is SMD. I hope that you have your notes with you because this video is going to be an important one. What I can tell you though from my own personal experience is the first time that you listen to a new subject or a new thought or a new topic, it's very difficult to grasp 100% of it. Maybe you will grasp 50% or 70%. I would recommend you to save this video into your watch later list and just come back to it occasionally because you will need this information. This isn't school where you just listen to some random bull that you're not gonna need. This is one of those things that school should have taught you. And so let's start off easy. What is SMB? If I had to put a definition for it, it is your position, your place in the sexual marketplace. Sexual marketplace is just a pool for dating. It's your place in the marketplace of dating and I guess getting girls bro if you want to say it like that when people ask you what do you bring to the table you should correlate that with your SMB score and so there is many different interpretations of how do you actually calculate your SMB I'm pretty sure I did the wheat waffles one and mine was 4.5 or something like that. But for the sake of simplicity and for the sake of focusing on the things that you can actually control, I'll just put my top five things that go into your SMB score. There's also different things that you can put into this calculation of your SMB. But what we're talking about in this video is looks, money, status, game, and power. Those are the definitive five of the definition of sexual market value. But before we dive into every single section of this SMB calculation, let's just talk about the female versus the male peak. All the red pillars are just like, yes, we're finally talking about this. If you didn't know, men and women, we have different peaks. There's this graph that Rollo Tomasi talks about in his book, The Rational Male. It's the male versus the female peak. It's your SMB with your age. As you can see, women peak around the age of 22, but they slowly but surely fall down. This is true for the majority of women. Statistically, when they get to the age of 22, 23, somewhere around that, they will experience experience the most attention they will ever get in their not just lives but in that age period then slowly it falls down with men you can see that yes we do peak at 34 35 but this is for the men that actually put in the work the average man no he's not better when he's 35 years old the average man nowadays also peaks at 22, 23. But if you are willing to put in the work, if you're willing to go to the gym when every single person goes to the pub, if you're willing to meditate while other people get drunk, you will eventually reach that peak. And your peak is more, let's say, flattened. You can have your peak between the ages of 35 and 45. I'm not even lying to you. If you're willing to put in the work, you can experience that peak later. And this is why so many men nowadays, they're living on the wrong timeline. They live the alcohol party lifestyle in their 20s. Meanwhile, their 30s, 40s, and 50s, they waste them. They just work for the same job for 30, 40 years and they get retired and that's it. They have nothing. But to quote unquote weird outliers, what we're doing is we decided, okay, we're probably gonna sacrifice our 20s. We're not gonna go out. Maybe we do once in a while. And we probably won't get into a serious long-term relationship that lasts, I don't know, 10 years or so. And so we decided that we're going to focus on improving ourselves when we are in our 20s. And by the time we're 30, 35, we're going to actually be in a position where we're at the top. There's no competition because everyone else is just experiencing the female party alcohol lifestyle. Hopefully by now you get the point. So now let's dive right in. 
the first thing and probably the most important thing that we can actually talk about is looks. When it comes to looks, a lot of people just assume that it's your facial attractiveness that matters. Well, to be honest, your face is kind of important and you should absolutely do looks maxing, which means to max out every single area of your face possible, to train your jawline, to do mewing and all that stuff. But what I want to talk about is your body. When we really think about you as a person, if I saw you 50 feet away, I wouldn't see your face exactly. I would only see your body. And your body from far away, it tells your potential dating partner how attractive you really are. And so we should focus the majority of our efforts to improve our attractiveness on our actual body. You can also do facial exercises, chew harder foods and all of that to improve your face. And so how do you actually improve your body? Through resistance training. If you're not aware, you can actually build the physique you want. I know that that seems, you know, common to us guys that lift on a day-to-day -day basis, but if you are younger than me, when you're 15, 16 years old, you don't actually know the whole world of improving your body. You can actually do that. You can actually have a six pack. You can have the wide shoulders, the large chest, the small calves. And to be honest, it's not really that difficult. Yes, it will take a long time to build a good aesthetic body, but time's gonna pass anyway. What are you gonna do? Sit home and play video games? Is that really what you want to do? And the amount of muscle on you isn't really correlated to your attractiveness. You have to understand that the majority of women prefer the lean yet aesthetic look. I don't have a clear example in my mind, but what makes a physique aesthetic? Well, it's the shape of his upper body. You want to be built like an upside down Dorito. So have a pretty slim waist, then have the lats go outward and there are your shoulders. A lot of guys nowadays, they're built like that. They're a rectangle or they're just a normal Dorito where their shoulders aren't really that wide and their hips are like a woman's basically. They have that hourglass shape. And so as a man, you get this aesthetic V taper look by prioritizing your lats, your abs, your upper chest, your shoulders, and your traps, and also your neck, because neck is a really important thing for attractiveness as well. When you look at these two pictures, which one is more attractive to you? If you're a modern then yes, the one with the skinny neck looks more attractive. But if you've actually got some self-respect and you have moderately high testosterone levels, you will realize that the majority of people prefer this thicker neck look. And of course, I'm currently training my neck. It's not that large, but it is a massive improvement of what it used to be. Also, to get that aesthetic physique, it will take a lot of work. This is not easy, but this is the truth. And the fact is, truth is always going to hurt somebody's feelings. Whether that be yours because you're just so mad, you can't get girls, right? But trust me, from what I've heard, it's worth it. Now, I've been lifting for around one and a half years and I have started to notice the female attention. You know, in the first few months, you don't really get any attention. Then one year passes by, you really think that these guys on the Red Pill forums are lying. You think that getting muscle doesn't really get you girls. And then you hit the sweet spot. You hit this golden ratio between a man's weight and a woman's weight. Currently for me, it's about 91, 92 kilograms, where you're just that bit larger than the average female and you are attractive. I mean, I've only just started my fitness journey. I have a long way to go, but generally I can say that it's going to be worth it. I can already see myself with that V taper, the wide shoulders, the big traps, the big neck. And to be honest, I'm excited for that future. It's going to take me another, I would say two to three years to actually build that. But what else am I going to do? Next up is money. Now, I would say this is my bottleneck because yes, I still am in school. It's not expected of me to make bank right now, but still I would like to have some income at least that is generated every single month. And I just wanna tell you this one thing, the money that is currently in your bank account, right? It's not really correlated to your SMB. You know, even if you tell a girl, yeah, I make $100,000 every single month, she wouldn't really care. It's the lifestyle that money brings you that is actually relevant. I mean, if you have photos on your Instagram of you in Dubai in a Ferrari and you're on a super yacht, that is actually attractive. But just money 
itself is worthless. <laughs> and so through actual financial education that you can find on YouTube for free, you can begin to maybe make your own business or become a, I don't know, bro, chief executive at your nine to five job and actually start making some good money. And therefore you will use that money to buy expensive assets. Maybe you will post those assets on Instagram, your Lambo, your G wagon, whatever. And that will increase your SMB. On a real note, it's not just about having assets. It's also about having money. You understand what I'm saying to you? I'll give you an example to make it simpler. Imagine you're on a date and you order a $2,000 bottle of wine and you're really indifferent about it. You're just like, yeah, uh, I'll have the, <laughs> I don't know wine names, bro. So sir, what would you like to have tonight? Thanks for asking. I'll have the Penfolds Grange Shiraz. Sir, that costs $2,000. Would you really like that? Give me 10 of them. True story. Of course, that scenario is very unlikely to happen, but you have that power to spend $2,000 on just one wine bottle. And of course, having 100 million and 1 billion, it's a really the same. You can buy the same things. There really isn't a thing you can buy with 1 billion that you can't buy with 100 million. Maybe a super yacht that costs 500 million dollars. Do we really need that? Is that really necessary? If you're in a similar position as me, where you're literally not making anything, you should make money your priority. Money and fitness are usually the priorities of young guys who are actually on self-improvement nowadays. Keep that in mind. We're running the same race, bro. Okay, so status. Status is also very essential. You can have the Lambos, you can have the 10 out of 10 physique, but if nobody knows who you are, what is the point? It's really attractive when you're on a date with a girl and somebody comes up to you and say, you dude, are you Milan? I've seen some of your videos and you're actually a really good guy. I'm a part of your community and I've watched some of your videos. To be honest, I've watched all of them, but you've generally fixed my life. I don't have any depression. I don't have none of that. Imagine the excitement that the girl is going to feel. Wait, Who's this guy? What, what is he talking about? Milan? YouTube? And so you're probably going to talk about your profession in that sense, but it's nice to have that level of status. But also status can be an annoying thing if you have too much of it. I mean, if you're trying to go on a date with a girl and there's a hundred people standing to meet you, it's not really attractive. It's just annoying. So to have some status, I would say 50,000 followers on Instagram. You're a somebody, but you're not celebrity level. Of course, having a few million followers doesn't hurt. But I would say what you should strive for is 50,000 followers, then see what happens from there. But that's international status. Before that, you should focus on the local one. And this is why you genuinely want to be nice to people you don't know. Why? Because we're talking about dating. You go to this one bar and every single waiter knows you and they know you because you're a nice guy and you also tip well. It's going to help your image if every single bartender in that bar likes you and knows you. I know this may be an autistic habit to do, but I would like to start doing it when I actually go on dates. Imagine a scenario, you're sitting with your girl at this local cafe, she goes to the bathroom. Now is your chance, start talking to every single person around you. You may be introverted, sure, talk to the people who are actually working there. You know, they've been there for eight or nine hours, they're just sick of it, nobody has actually given them a compliment. Imagine you go up to a bartender, yo man, that drink was absolutely amazing. I don't know what you put in that cocktail, I don't know what you put in that cocktail, but that was one of the best cocktails I've ever had in my entire life. And the girl comes back and she sees you talking to this random stranger, she hasn't seen anything like it. And if you have the ability, if you have the social skills to talk to literally anybody, you're going to be perceived as a nice kind person. And the next thing is game. No, it's not your ranking League of Legends. That's really <laughs> irrelevant when you're on a date. But what game is, it's your social skills when talking to women. It's your ability to be charismatic. It's your ability to be liked by the girl you're talking to. And of course, because everything exists on YouTube nowadays, there is also a day game where you talk to random strangers in order to prepare for the night. There's also books written on this specific subject. Many of you will probably know which one I'm talking about. There's pickup artists, there's also strategies. It's somewhat comical that people can actually have 
a master's degree in just talking to women. Like, I don't know, man. The only advice I'd actually give you when it comes to game and talking to women is imagine how your ideal male role model would act. For me personally, it's Tristan Tate or James Bond. In a weird autistic way, ask this to yourself. Of course, don't say it out loud. What would James Bond say? Hmm. Well, I do plenty of things, which it would take me a lot of time to explain, so let's just say I help people. I help my people. And of course, because the conversation is dry and I'm talking to the camera, it seems cringe now. But it is much better to say this rather than to say, yeah, I'm a Starbucks employee and I work for $11 an hour. Let's be honest, being a little bit mysterious actually helps you in the long run. And power. Whether that be political, whether that be financial, or just general power. If you have power, and power is the last part of this. If you have everything, if you have the cars, if if you have the status, if you have the game, if your physique looks good, you now need power. You now need a solid network around the world that are going to help you. I'm not saying that you need to change an election. I'm not saying that you need to become the president. But being someone important, being a person who can change things like this is deemed as attractive. I don't want to go into detail here because I still want this video up on my channel and I don't want my channel deleted, but you can probably assume what I'm talking about when it comes to power. And so when you've studied every single thing that I've talked about, you have to ask yourself, if my SMB is a 4.2, let's say, what is yours? If you have some humility, if you've never been on self-improvement, you will probably say a 2 or a 3, but that's fine. If you were to look at the SMB chart again. My SMB is literally the lowest as it could possibly be. What's going to happen in 5, 10, 15 years? I'm literally going to be on top of the world. And people will say, oh Milan, you have a giant ego. It's not ego, that it's a fact. Even if you're 20 or 22, you're still young. You still have time to study finances, to improve your fitness, to also improve your game, to, to build a great network. You have time for all of those things. I don't want you to be discouraged. This is a channel about self-improvement. I'm a young guy. I'm documenting my journey here on YouTube. I'm currently 17 years old. And if you want to watch a guy like me, an unconventional YouTuber that's going to tell you the truth, even when you don't want to hear it, you can subscribe to our channel and watch another video. See you in the future, bro.